Devin, <clears throat> I figured this would be better than uh, an email back to you because I wanted to go over a few things we talked about a little more. Um, I appreciate you emailing me and asking me these questions. Um, the last email you sent me, you said, I appreciate your opinion on the matter, and I just wanted to clarify that the things I told you were not my opinion, and I'm, I greatly apologize if I made it sound like I was giving you my opinion on those things. And so with that in mind, I think that it would be advantageous for me to go over the reasons why I gave you the information that I did, and also use this opportunity to educate others on the matter. So, um, to everybody else that just is watching this video now, um, he asked me about an engine lasting 80,000 to 100,000 miles while making four or 500 wheel horsepower. And so my short answer was no, that it isn't, um, <clears throat> it isn't really possible, but it's, it's a little bit of a, of a lie. Um, it really depends on how you drive it. So before I go into that, let's go back to longevity versus reliability. So I got my little my note here, this board. Okay, so longevity, that's how long something lasts, right? And I like to think of it as how long something lasts before it wears out. Um, because if it fails, well, then it has become unreliable. I think it falls under reliability. So longevity, when someone's longevity, me, that to me is saying how long does something last before it wears out? Reliability is how long is something going to last before it fails or how likely is it to fail, right? So when someone asks me the question, uh, once something that's going to last 80 to 100,000 miles, well, to me, we're talking about longevity. This thing's going to last this many miles, and it's not going to fail at the end. It's just going to be worn out. And so what happens to the engine when it wears out? Well, when something wears out an engine, it's usually going to be the rings um, have worn down, the ring gaps have opened up, the piston skirts have probably worn some, and the, the piston now looser, it's sloppier in there, and it uh, burns more oil. The rings aren't as sealed as they used to be, so you have more blow-by. Um, more of combustion pressure gets past the ring gaps. That's what blow-by is. Uh, and therefore, it's less of it's used efficiently in the engine. Extra blow-by causes oil to go through the PCV system in the engine to get burned off. You have more oil contamination. So the engine it doesn't just stop running all of a sudden, but it isn't the tight, pristine, you know, well-engineered um, engine that you had, you know, when, when you first had it, um, when it was first built. So to me, that's longevity. It's it's not broken, but it's wore out. Um, and I guess my cat is here to, to learn about engines too. Uh, anyways, so that's longevity. Reliability is, you know, is it going to fail? What, well, what kind of things affect that? Uh, horsepower being over the capability of the components is something that would definitely affect reliability. If the tuner is too aggressive with the ignition advance and you're continuously having knock events that uh, either overpressurize the cylinders or cause damage to the piston and um, rings or ring lands, things like that, um, that would be something that would affect reliability. Leaving you straight on the side of the road is a reliability aspect of it. Whereas longevity, like I said, it would just wear out. It'd be noisier, you'd burn more gas, you'd burn more oil. It's not, you know, it's not gonna leave you stranded, but it's not gonna make as much power and it's not going to um, be as quiet. So, those two things. Now, first off, how does power output of an engine affect longevity? And that's basically what I believe the question you were asking me was, and that's what I was trying to answer. And so what I stated was that any time an engine makes more horsepower than it was designed to make, you reduce longevity. Now, why is that? It's because you increase wear. Now, if the engine makes 600 wheel, but you never punch it, and you drive it around at a low horsepower level, because it only takes 30 horsepower to go down the freeway at 70 plus miles an hour or something like that, 25 to 30 horsepower, then the engine is going to last just as long as it would in any other configuration, as long as all the components remain the same. So what I'm saying is if you had a stock engine and you had a big turbo on it, E85, you know, tuned, and you made 700 wheel on the dyno somehow, on a stock engine, but you never punched it. You always shipped it under three grand, you drove around all the time, the thing was making 30 horsepower for its life, right? It's going to last just as long as the stock engine would last that was capable of making 300, or that was, you know, making 300 horsepower. Because you're not making that 700, not using that, that horsepower. Now, why does that matter? Well, it matters because horsepower is a direct result of cylinder pressure. And cylinder pressure is a direct, has a direct effect on wear. Why? Well, as you see my, my picture here, this is a piston, in case you'd recognize it, a piston. 
it's really zoomed in here. This would be where the wrist pin is, piston skirt. These are the grooves for the rings. Uh, people refer to these as ring lands. Often you hear about the screws breaking ring lands. That means that this groove right here broke and has come free. Now what does that do? Well, the ring itself, I've indicated here, uh, this is just a profile of the ring, cross section of it. You know, in fact, it sits in this groove all the way around. And that's why I shade this blue to show you where the ring sits on the piston. So under uh, acceleration, under uh, high horsepower, or whenever the engine's actually making power, the combustion forces push down, they come down between the piston and crown and the cylinder wall. They push down on the ring against this bottom part of the piston and out on the ring towards the cylinder wall. There's a gap left in here in the, the ring groove by the manufacturers, and many of the rings are actually cut with a bevel here on top so that the gases can get in behind the ring and push it at this angle, down the ring lands, out to the cylinder. Now, the harder it pushes, both down and out, the faster it's going to wear. If I take sandpaper and I rub it against the surface really lightly, it's going to move a little bit of material. If I take that sandpaper and I push harder and harder and harder, it's going to move more and more material. The same thing happens with the rings. As cylinder pressure goes up with horsepower, the amount of wear that occurs from this ring to the cylinder is going to go up as well. Um, unfortunately, it's not linear. Um, research has shown that, well, I love that catchword, right? Um, that the wear increases closer to exponentially as cylinder pressure goes up linearly. Um, which means the more horsepower I make, the faster it wears out. But again, you have to be making that horsepower for the pressure to be up for it to push against it, not a couple dyno rooms. Same thing is said for RPM. As cylinder speed increases, as, the, as piston speed increases, I mean, the rings rub faster and faster against the cylinder wall, that's going to also increase wear. The rings are going to scrape oil off. Um, the oil is not going to be able to splash up and replenish as well. You also have a higher speed. You, know, you rub my hand across the board slowly, right? And now a lot of heat is generated. If I rub it faster, heat is generated and it gets warm. Same thing happens in the piston. If you rub faster and faster, you're going to get more heating, you're going to have more friction, and it's going to wear more. So if you shift at lower RPM all the time and you, you don't spend much time on the rev limit or at higher RPMs, the engine is not going to wear out as fast. So that's where the whole aspect of longevity comes in with horsepower. Now, also is affected by the components. Many people believe if I put forged pistons in my engine, it's going to last longer. Well, no, it might be more reliable because it's not going to break from the horsepower that you've made. The ring lands won't crack from a few detonation events, but it's not going to have more longevity. It's going to be quite the opposite. If the, if the forged motor and the factory hypertech cast piston motor were subject to the exact same environment and it was not free, the factory motor will last longer. I mean, first off, that's what it's designed to do. It's designed to last longer. Um, the reasons are, are plentiful, and we go over a few of them. One, the design of the piston itself. The material that's used on the stock piston is not largely affected by temperature, which I'm saying, but what I mean by that is it doesn't expand and contract and change its diameter with temperature dramatically, and so they can take this piston and put it really, really close to the cylinder wall. Now, what does that do for you? Well, everyone hears about piston slap from a piston that has a large, or from a large piston to wall clearance on a forged piston. Oh, the motor's so noisy. Well, that slap isn't good. I mean, it's, it happens with, you know, forged motors, it's expected because they do initially have a large piston to wall clearance until they warm up. The problem is, is what you're hearing is the piston moving around in the bore. Now, if you think about these rings that are sitting in this piston, if I take this piston and I twist it now, well, this ring is no longer sitting flush against the cylinder wall. It's now at an angle. So now the ring has a much smaller contact patch with the cylinder wall. But the cylinder pressures haven't changed. It's still running the exact same cylinder pressure at idle as it would on the factory pistons. Only now, that force is being distributed to a much smaller portion of the ring. That alone means I've increased the amount of pressure on that area and it's going to wear quicker. And I'm rounding the rings off. As the piston moves back and forth, I'm rounding the corners off the rings and making this ring even more barrel shaped. Some rings are pretty barrel shaped to begin with. Um, some of them are a little flatter. But the idea is that you want to have as much contact with the cylinder wall and you want to minimize moving the force around, right? So you get some ring wear on the outside edge here. You also have the ring sliding in and out on this uh, on the ring land, and that erodes the aluminum slightly, and it causes uh, wear in here as well. So now the force piston, as you see, is moving around, and it's going to wear the rings and everything. And also the skirt. The skirt comes in, it slaps against the piston, the forces are applied down here or over here instead of in, you know, right here as the piston is moving around. Whereas the factory piston, 
it's all tight. It stays tight. The piston stays square in the bore because there's no room for it to wiggle. It stays in there tight. So the rings are always lined up. They're always in the same place on the ring lands. The skirt is always running right close to, to the, the cylinder wall. So you don't have issues with wear. Will the factory piston break and become unreliable at high horsepower levels, especially if you make either a lot of horsepower, have uh, detonation events or other things, yeah, the factory piston can be less reliable because the ring land can break and you have a component failure. Is it? But in the same scenario without detonation, the forged piston will wear out sooner than the factory piston. So I hope that that helps a little bit and describe what I mean by reliability versus longevity and how the factory engine will actually last longer than any forged motor with any amount of horsepower capability. Um, <clears throat> and I hope you understand that this isn't opinion. This is how it works. Thank you.